that was cast out of heaven or in prison that they waited for the judgment of the great day. Uh, but we, but we, yeah. as children of God, uh, uh, that once was bound for hell, Amen. are changed around and going to heaven today uh, because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, incorruptible, imperishable blood of that ball upon the tree uh, without any assistance from anyone. No, how he said, I could have called a legion of angels. But he didn't need a brother. He was God himself in the flesh dying for me and like me and you. Amen. Oh, I'm so happy to be here today. I, uh, I'm going to preach. I love to preach. I don't do nothing but preach. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be in this church today and see these little children. I belong to the regular Baptist for 60 years. And that's just, today's the first day I've seen little children run and lift in the pulpit and play. I'm saying that makes me happy. Yeah. That makes me know that there will be a church here. Yeah. 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 That makes me know that there will be a church here yeah. because we brought them up in the nurture. And that is the issue of the Lord. It's so important for to be here. Now, I'm going to preach something. I, I feel like preaching. I want to preach. Yeah. And in these last days, in these last days, I, 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 uh, I believe it's the last of the last days. I, I still believe that he's, uh, he's coming back soon to get it. I, I always read a lot. And the brothers up home asked me why I read a lot of scripture. Of an old brother that I was growing up under told us about reading. He said, uh, they asked him why he read a lot. He said, well, I always read a lot of scripture. I always read a lot of scripture, uh, trying to get up enough nerves to start preaching. I, I don't know. I don't know if you brothers are that way or not, but that I'm a whole lot that way. And he said, there's a second reason for him to read a lot of scripture. He said, anyway, if he got in trouble in one place, it was very easy to move into another place. You understand it and, 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 and get that. But, I, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some for you. And then I'm, I'm going to preach just a little bit. I won't take long. I thought that you did the work. I read your image and you're doing your work. And I, I thought after you made a move and sex to close the church, close the work of the association. I, I, I thought they made two terrible mistakes. I, uh, everything was good, but they made two terrible mistakes. And that was me and Randy Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> two terrible mistakes. God, if that he did, let, let him have a problem. And uh, uh, they, they some things that bothered my mind that I want to talk to all, all of you about and preach to you about today. Uh, that, that I think is very important. Uh, that we must not let them slip. Notice what the Bible said. Least at any time you would let them slip. For if, listen, for if the work spoke of the angels was stuck back to every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense more, we'll not escape. No. Let me tell you something. Every yeah. sin is accounted for. Yeah. Every sin will be judged. And, and, and we, need to, we need to come to a place in our life where that we need to pray often for forgiveness. Amen. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I repented when I was I, I repented when I was 18 years old, and I repented every day since then. And I'm 80 years old now. And I've been repenting since then. Now you say, Brother Chuck, I I you know I had a funeral the other day, and, and a woman come to me, and you you your brothers wouldn't understand what I'm going to say to you, but she came to me and she said, Father Casey, that, that ought to tell you what they, what, what, what kind of a, a, a folks that I'm dealing with. Yeah. And she said, Father Casey, we know you're going to heaven because you're such a good man. And I said, you don't know me. <laughs> oh, you don't know me. Yeah. 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 If ever you look to the man that has been saved by the mercy and grace of God, it. yeah. it's me. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
me. I told him. I said, Lord, as an 18-year-old boy, I told him, I said, Lord, oh, this is the best day I've ever lived. But he said, Chuck, he spoke to me and he said, Chuck, but this is not your best day. There's another day coming. There's another day coming. When the shackles of sin and the shackles of death, they'll be, they'll be left in the grave with the dust. And you will rise with healing. Amen. And it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with what I want to preach about. <laughs> in the book of Joshua, we're looking for substitutes all the time. Yeah. You know that? We look for we look for something to take something's place. We're always looking for tokens. And so, and so in the, in the book of Joshua, the second chapter, uh, in order to conserve time, I'll just read a couple, two verses. Maybe you're three. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither but did there remain any more courage in any man. Because of you, for the Lord God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord that since I showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Now, I want to explain what a token is. I'm going to stop on there. I want to tell you a story and then, then I'm going to try to show you some things, things that I want you to see. A, a true token. A true token. A, a token is a sign uh, of something that is uh, from, from, could be from God, but a token that you know, they have in gambling places, you know. Uh, you get a token. You have to take something and it's a sign. It's something that represents something else. And so uh, I could show you, I want to tell you uh, about a token. Uh, a token was something that was uh, uh, back uh, in, in Bible times, in the book of Genesis, uh, God destroyed the earth uh, by water. And, yeah. and uh, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a promise, as a promise, as a token, as a token uh, to know God put a rainbow yeah. in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. He put that rainbow up in the sky as a token that he would never destroy the earth by water and heat. It was a token. So, brothers, when you go out and have, when the sun's shining and you see the rain coming down, go out and look. Just go out and look. And somewhere in the sky, you'll see a rainbow. How the Lord's such a blessing to me. Every time I look at it, I mean, that's been 6,000 years ago. You understand where I'm coming from? That was 6,000 years ago. I, I can tell you this. If God makes a promise to you, he'll keep it. He promised me eternal life, and I've done it for good. Amen. And listen to me. And God gave us a token. That's a token. It's a token. I look up there and I say, that's a token. That's a token. Six thousand years ago, he told those people apart. He said, "I'll never do it. I'll never destroy it again." Amen. I'll never destroy it again. And then uh, listen to this. Earlier in the chapter, in the book of Genesis, God came to a man by the name of Abraham, and notice what he said. Now here is here is going to be my covenant with you. This will be a covenant with you, and I'm going to give you a token. Here will be a token that that, that you're going to be mine, and I'm going to be yours. Yeah. And he gave him the token, the token of circumcision as a sign. It's a token. It's a token that God's people will be marked forever. Yeah. It's a true token yeah. from God out of heaven. Well. Listen to me. Then in the story that I'm going to tell you right now in a few minutes is about a lady, a, a lady, and, 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 and uh, uh, the Bible calls her a great hatter. And always, oh, 
But you see, I, I'm amazed at how the Bible is written. Uh, God, God was careful to bless those inspired men to write inspired words. And every place, that, every place, you folks listen to me, every place in Scripture uh, that this woman is mentioned, she's called Rahab the harlot. I, I'm amazed at that. I'm amazed at that. Are you listening? Yeah. Well, can I tell you something? Are you folks listening to me? I mean, when I was a boy in high school, over at Belfry High School, over here at Belfry, Kentucky, I played football, basketball. I was a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good athlete. I uh, just about everywhere I went, and uh, they were so good to me, uh, and uh, they gave me such a good name. They called me Chicken. And I went back there for my 50th class reunion. 50 years later, I went back to my old high school. And they and one boy got up. Listen to this. You, you boys won't believe what I'm telling you. And one boy that I graduated with was a deacon in a church there. And he, he, he got up in front of all of our class. All of our class. And he said, you folks are not going to believe who's going to be praying over our food because I cussed it most of my life. <laughs> and he said, chicken is going to come and pray for us. And the whole, my whole class stood up and clapped her hand. And I had a chance to preach to my class for you. And I, I said, let this be a token for you. I want it to be a sign for you that I want to be a token to you people that God, God, this is a sign. Me being here today is a sign from God that He can save anybody. <laughs> he can save anybody. It's not, it's not incumbent upon Him to turn anyone away. But anyone who will come to God, He'll save them. Yeah. Yeah. To the uttermost. I, I think I think you've got to believe in the Lord Jesus. That's what I now, brothers, listen. We went long enough on dreams. I did not dream that I got saved. Now look at me. I, I didn't dream that I got saved. I was right there when it happened. I was right there when it happened. And I guess I ought to know. It didn't it that night, it didn't happen to you. It happened to me. That's right. And I'm a smart enough man to know uh, that it happened. And I was there. And I was witnessed. I was witnessed. There wasn't nobody there but me. And I had to listen. I had to, well, because of my training and teaching of some of my family, I've been taught to read the Bible. But I got in trouble on my account of my sins. 380 miles away from where my mom and dad was. I think God did that to show me that salvation is not in mom and dad. He got me, he got me cornered, and he pressed me down. And I got them on the knees. And this fellow there, this fellow there, that he had a car. He went around and sold Bibles and stuff, and. As an 18 year old boy, I graduated from high school on May the, May the, uh, the 12th. And May the 18th, I moved to Cleveland, Ohio. My brother got me a job. I made $80.50 the first week I worked at $2.50 an hour, union wages. And boy, I, I sang that first paycheck. That was the biggest amount of money I'd ever seen in all of those 18 years. <laughs> I've never seen that much money. And I thought I owned the work. But about six months later, about six months later, I wandered into a little church in Arizona. That preacher, that preacher got up and this old boy, I mean, he, he had he had the goods with him. <laughs> and I mean, he just laid it down. He just started watching that. But he was talking to nobody here. I was sitting in the back seat. And he pointed every time he put in his hand. <laughs> he pointed right at me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and 
I said, Jake was a little girl. And I told her, I said, well, we're not going back to that church anymore. We that. We're, done. we're done with that place. We'll have to hunt someplace else. But the next Sunday, I just had a strong mind to go right back. And guess what? The same thing that happened the Sunday before, he done the same thing. And I guess he probably know that I was guilty. I don't, I'm not sure, but he may have known that I was guilty. And he just kept pointing that finger at me. And he just kept pointing me out. And I, I told my I told my girlfriend that time, I said, you would think that he'd you think he'd look at somebody else every now and then. <laughs> you would think he'd look at somebody else every now and then. But but, but listen, this man was selling me a Bible to cut his store short. Had a big picture on it. And it was a big blue ribbon hotel Bible. About that big. And I said, I'll read my way out of this thing. Yeah. And I got that Bible. Yeah. That's just what my mother had taught me to do. Trust the trust the Lord and read the Bible. I'll never forget. See, it all starts back a long time ago. Way long time ago. When I graduated from high school. My brother was there to pick me up and take me away. Over here on the road for a big tree. Right over here in Pike County. And I'll never forget as long as I live. I, you know, I was wild and nobody couldn't tell me. But my dad, my dad was a special kind of fellow. He was just something different about it. I never hear him cuss a word. And my wife, my brother said, no, sir, he knows. I never, never. And I normally packed me a little suitcase. Everything I had in life was put in a little suitcase not that long. And about that high. Folks, listen to me. If you're not saved, listen to me. She gave me that little suitcase. And I walked off the porch. I walked off the porch. But before I walked off the porch, my mother kissed me from the top of my head all the way down to my shoulder. She took that, she took that apron and wiped a tear from her eyes. And she looked. And my dad, I never, I never seen him. He shed a tear in my life. I never seen him. He'd get, he'd get a little ball of water out there. I mean, he do his eyes. Me and him walked off. Porch and down into the yard. My brother was in the car waiting for us. And to this day, I, I carry a I carry a rubber band around my around my pocketbook because Daddy's was falling apart. And he took that rubber band off and he opened it up and he got one twenty. A one five dollar bill. Out. This was in 1959. He got it out of his pocketbook and he gave it to me. And he said, "Charles, this is all me and your mother got. This is all me and your mom got." But they had two big balls of water put up in his eyes, right in, right out here. Yeah. He said, but I just want you to know, as long as God's mercy permits us to live, we'll never pray praying for you. Yeah. Oh, I, couldn't get, I couldn't get away from that. I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't quit that. I, couldn't, I just couldn't turn that away. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't function at all. I was a functioning person. A lot more than that. That was a talk to drink liquor, not drink liquor, but to drink some I, I, I went in a restaurant one time and they give me a, they give me a, they give me a, a, a my paycheck and I cashed it there. And I went in and I ordered beer and I said up on this stool, something your mother's praying to you. Yeah. I, I fought that off. I, I just fought it off because I, sure. I thought we were having a real good time. Listen to me, Paul. There's no good times out there. There's no good times outside the walls of this church. Stay close to the people of God. Stay close to a little heaven. Yeah. yeah. And 
not to, I got under work condition. Nothing made me happy. No, right. Nothing that's made right. me happy. No. No. But I can tell you this. And I got that, I got that Bible. I bought off of that guy and I said, buddy, I'll read my way out. And I got sick. And every page I read, I got to tell me if you know that the blood of Jesus is on every page. Yeah. 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 And the sacrifice that he made for the sin of the world is on every page of that right. yeah. you, right. you can cut it anywhere and it'll bleed. Yeah. It'll yeah. bleed with the blood of Christ. You can name this. So I think God made it that way. He wanted it that way. I ran, I laid down. One night I come home from work. I was working the afternoon shift and I come home with all the golf over. And I laid that Bible down. I was sleeping. I was a single man. I was sleeping on no Hollywood couch and living with my older brother. Not this one, the older one. And I laid that Bible down in the darkest hour of the night. And I laid my head on that book and I said, God, I'm going as far as I can go. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You must save me now. Right. <laughs> They're all curry. That's it. And guess what? That's it. <laughs> guess what? It's a magic word. He didn't have to come from heaven. He is right there. <laughs> yeah. Two witnesses. 
Those two witnesses went back. She hit them. Yes, she did. And she hit them. But I want you to know something. Before she hit them, before she took them away, she said, she said, I just want you to know. I just want you to know that we that what what we have heard. Yeah. Just from what we've heard. I I uh, I know that the Lord God is the God of heaven yes. and the God of earth. Yes. Would you believe me if I told you that that's the same testimony that Abraham had to become the father and the friend of God? Yeah. Yeah. That's all the confession you need. The Lord, He is God in heaven yeah. and on earth. That confession brought justification to her and it brought justification to Abraham. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I'm telling you right. You can check your head if you want to. I'm telling you right. Can I tell you, can I tell you that this woman, this woman said, oh, we're just scared to death of people and, and, and notice something. She said, I, I, I need a true token. I need yeah. a yeah. true token that so you'll not destroy me. You're coming kind of to destroy this place. We know it. We know it. But uh, I want you to protect me and my father and my uh, father and my mother and my family. Yeah. You know, and there's an amazing thing here. She never mentioned anything about having a husband. No. No, no. I, mean, I don't think it was a husband involved. This is just amazing. It's what I'm telling you, amazing. Yeah. Amazing thing. But I'm going to tell you something. He's coming by. Now, listen, and, and you guys are coming in. We know you're coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to give me a true token. Yeah. What and uh, she had taken a scarlet thread. Mm -hmm. She had taken a scarlet thread. And, and she was going to let young boys down you know, to escape. She lived on the wall. That's where yeah. the prostitutes live. And uh, uh, she lived on the wall and she lived in the town. That started praying. But she said, now give me a true token. Yeah. Give me a true token that you want, that when you come in, you'll, yeah. you'll say to me that my family will not die. And the business said, all right, here's what I want you to do. Uh, it'll be a true token. You. Now we're going to, I'm going to, when you let us down, take this scarlet rope and tie it in that window right there. Yeah. Yep. And when we come by, we'll run. And I and we destroy this whole city. Jerk. Yep. When we destroy this whole city, when we see that sign yeah. hanging in the window. Yep. Are you listening? Yeah. We can't guarantee. Your family, unless they're in the house, yeah. have to yeah. be in the house. Yeah. Amen. And unless you've been, and unless you spoke them with the offered mercies of God, I cannot guarantee you safety. That's right. But I can guarantee a safe passage. Yeah. I guarantee a safe passage if you've got the blood. Yeah. Amen. If you've got a true token, if you've got a real token, that a sign, and the sign is of Christian life. What you have been saved by the grace of God. He'll teach you to live the Christian yeah. life. Yeah. If you go to the right church, somebody will teach you the right yeah. thing. Yeah. Some, yeah. some get taught more than others. <laughs> Amen. That's true. I like yeah. to know where I've taught the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. So help me God. Amen. And it's in this word right here. And so I'm going to talk to you. Now I'm, going to, I'm down. Here's the message. Here's the message. I want to give you some true tokens for mine and your day. I want to give you some tokens. I want you to have some tokens. I want you to have some signs uh, uh, about the Lord. The first token I want to talk to you about is the sure promise. The sure promise of the Word of God. Now men, listen to me. This is the King James Version of the Bible. <coughs> This book is absolute truth. Yes, there's, not yes. a, there's not a, a chance for error in it. If it's error, if there's one place where it's wrong, it's wrong in more than one. That's right. It's, it's no good for it to be cast out. It is the perfect our word of God. Notice what God said. Notice what God said. In the book of Psalms, he cherished his word 
This is his. Yeah. He cherished his word above his name. Let me tell you something. If this was wrong, God's wrong. Yeah. He said, I cherish this book above my own name. Don't change it. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. Somebody said this. That brother Chuck, if we get the new one, we can understand it better. Now I want to tell you something. What's wrong with you? You are you listening? <laughs> I believe, I honestly believe this is the word of God. And if you change it, if you change it, you'll have to give an account. Uh, you'll have to give an account to God. This is the word of God. This is God's word. This is God's, it was, it was given, all scripture is given to the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Amen. And so it is time. It is time that we start preaching the Word of God. Somebody said, Brother Chuck, you make your sermons up. I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> yeah. And I listen to other men. I listen to other men. I write down what other men say. If I think it's good, I write it down and check it out. If it works, man, I'm using it. That's <laughs> true, <laughs> 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 Amen. Can I tell you something? They learn from one another. Those early meetings. And brothers and sisters, brothers, and sisters, listen to me. You, all you folks, listen to me. We hear it, we've heard it all of our life. He said, continue in them. Continue in those things of which you have heard, at least at any time you've learned to slip. He said, but I want you to continue in these, these things. This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinner, the happiness of believers. His doctrines are holy. His precepts are binding. His histories are true. His decisions are immutable. Do you know when the God's Bible makes a decision? It's forever. Amen. This book will stand forever. Yes. Read it to be wise. Yes. Believe it to be safe. Oh Practice it to be holy. Yes. It contains life to direct you, food, sports, and comfort to cheer you. It's a traveler's map, the pilgrim's stash, the pilot's compass, and the soldier's sword. It has given you in life and will be open to judgment and be remembered forever. The word and, of course, uh, the word and, the simple word and, occurs 46,277 times, while the word reverend is mentioned one time. Amen. You can say amen right there. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Uh, it's mentioned one time. Uh, did you know uh, that, the, uh, that the 19th chapter of 2 Kings uh, and the 36th chapter of Isaiah are identical? You can read them. Both of them say the same thing. Why would God want to do something like that? I'm here to, I want you to tell them to know something. God, God establishes every fact. Sure. He established that His Word may be established. He established every word. And, and notice something. This book was written over a period of 1,600 years by about 39 authors, amen, and, and at different times, yeah. in different places, and they said different things at different times, but it all, when, 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 when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of it and puts it together, it's a perfect chain of truth from the beginning of Genesis to the end of the book of Revelation. I mean, all the way through, it'll coordinate with itself and, uh, and notice something. And, and the Bible, in the Bible, there are 66 books. 66 books. 1,189 chapters. Uh, amen. 41,173 verses. 774,746 words. 3,566,480 letters in the King James Version of the Bible. Read it to be wise. Yeah. Believe it to be saved. And practice it to be a holy. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. The second, that, this is the first token right here. The second token is the blood of Christ. Yeah. Now notice something. Moses said, and I'm going to, I want you to put this blood up over the door. And the blood shall be to you for a token. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass. 
Oh, we are not told. The blood of Christ is a token. I had I had my third open heart surgery. A, a, a great doctor from Cleveland Clinic operating on me for the third time. They opened my chest up. And I told him, I told him, I said, I'm gonna tell you something, son. There'll be blood in the work. There'll be blood in the work when you cut in there. And he had it cut all the way down. I said, but you look real close. Because there's some blood of another man in there. <laughs> <laughs> there's some blood of another man. Yeah. For the blood of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ Come on. is a true token that you've been saved. Amen. And notice something. That blood is life-giving. And it gives life to the soul and hope for the body of a resurrection that will live forever. Amen. Come. The third token is the forgiveness of sin. I want to tell you something, boys and girls. We have there's not a man or woman in this building that is as good as they think they are. <laughs> there's, there's not a woman. Oh, all of us thinks more high than we are. Somebody said, oh, the little John. Your little John laid his head on his breast and he's your little John glove. And he said, let me sit on your right hand when you come. Yeah. Yeah. Am I telling you right? Yeah. Pride, son, is a thing that we have to deal with. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you've been saved. You'll fight it till the day you die. It will never look at me. It will never. We're telling people. We are telling people that it'll be easy to live a Christian life. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest preachers I ever listened to in my entire life, here's what he said. He said, if I ever had a reason to differ with my Lord on anything that he has said, it would be this. If he said to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. If I had anything to differ with yeah. Christ, yeah. if I had any reason right. to, die, to doubt, the blessed Son of God. Yeah. It would mean that He would say to me, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. Oh, listen, brothers, when you lay down on your pillow tonight, look back over this day, and you'll see thoughts that you never dreamed you would think. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Don't be so distinct among us. I know. I know everyone wants to be. There's things that I think I would I would never let you know and don't want God to know. I wish you knew. That's the truth. So don't don't get on your high horse and ride off into the sunset and think you're some kind of No no. We've not reached it, but we will. We've not reached perfection, but we will. Amen. Until that time, until that time, we need forgiveness of sin. And I said to you, I've repented every day since God saved me, and I'm still repenting. Eighty years old. Amen. These times I go home, I pastored the same church for 37 years. And uh, I got it was time I go home and lay down on my bed, look up at the sky. And, and I said, Oh God. He said, All right, let's hear him say, Son. Over to over, and you're standing in line. And you're standing in line over the grocery store, and you let that woman go in front of you. I was really proud of you, man. You did me good. That's what God said. And then there was time to leave down. I leave down, looked up at the ceiling, and he said, Chuck, I wish you'd have done better. I was really disappointed. I was expecting you to say something for my call. I was expecting you to say something. Yeah. You make you make you you follow me I'll have those kind of days yeah. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's three or four of them. I'm not going to take the time. I'll very quick to them. There's some true token. There's some real tokens in this Bible. 
Hunt for them, man. Yeah. Hunt for those dogs. Listen. I was going to say this. My son, who's a pastor of Christ Church now, was in the Marine since it's been 30 years ago. And he come home and started back. And he, and he, and he, something happened to his car. And he called home and he said, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to be ill or something don't happen. And I said, well, I think, you know, he said, I'm here in this restaurant. And I called, I was supposed to listen to me. I called that woman at the restaurant. And I begged her. I said, ma'am, I'm a preacher. I'll see, if you'll just give him $50 to catch a bus, I'll send you the money in the morning. I don't want him to be late. She said, she said, Pastor, I hear that story three times a week. I hear that story all the time. I hear it. You, you can't have any money. We're not giving him nothing. All hope is I told my wife, what's the situation talk? And more the girls listen to me. I walked out of my house and down the steps. And I walked out and it was a clear blue sky. And I looked up to him. I looked up to God and pleaded. God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what. All I know to do is to help you. My wife went in the bathroom and got up on her knees and was praying. Yeah. You know what I didn't know? After we checked it, brother, at the very moment I was praying, there's an 18 wheeler pulled into that. Pulled into that truck stop for my son. And, and he said, Rick, he's standing on the road and he said, Where are you going, son? He said, I'm going, I'm going back to my base. He said, I'm going to that very base to deliver these goods. Get yeah, on board. <laughs> and he's coming out. Amen. Don't you tell me that God don't give us a token every now and Every now and then, God will give you a token. Come you understand? A short right. word of Something that you can depend on yeah. when the clouds are hanging low and the rain is coming down yeah. and the storm is beating upon you. Yeah, yeah. You can say you did it then and you can do it again. Yeah. yeah. I love you, man. I love you. He can work it on that. That's you know, in the Bible. In the Bible, there's a man by the name of Jesus. They said, if a man can tell you to go a mile, every one of them support that promise each other. I'll go to the second mile next week. I'll go to the second mile sometime next week. Yeah. Amen. <laughs>